Welcome to August Leco Challenge. Today's problem is implement RAN10 using RAN7. Given a function RAN7 which generates a uniform random integer in the range of 1 to 7, write a function RAN10 which generates a random integer in the range of 1 to 10. Do not use any random libraries and they give us some examples. So they're already going to give us to us a function RAN7. It's predefined and each test case is only going to be given one argument which is the number of times our function ran10 is called. So at first, this sounds pretty simple. It might be tempting to think, well, we have our ran7 function. Why not just call it twice, add those two numbers together, and return it if it's uh, less than, or I should say, uh, less than or equal to 10. Otherwise, we can just run it again and keep, keep continuing that. But that's not going to work because it's actually not random. It's not uniformly random because let's say you had a six-sided die, right? And I asked you, hey, create a function that's going to give us a number between 1 to 12. Well, with a random die, it is random, right? 1 through 6 is going to be random. And you might think, well, okay, I'll just roll it twice and then I'll give you the number that adds up. I mean, that doesn't work though because first off, it's not going to be 1 through 12. It's going to be 2 to th 2 through 12. And more importantly, each one of those summed numbers actually has a different probability. Like anyone would know that 7 has a greater probability than the number 2. And that's kind of a weird thing that happens with um, this sort of probability questions. It's not that easily, you know, additive. So what can we do instead? Well, let's think about like, if simplifying this version, if we had a coin and it could be heads or tails. Let's say I asked you, uh, use this coin to return um, a probability between three. So if we flipped a coin, it would be, you know, heads or tails. So it's two, pop two outcomes. If we flipped it twice, there would be four outcomes, right? If we flipped it three times, there would be eight outcomes because um, you know, this would be like heads, heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, that'd be four outcomes. And it would continue on like this exponentially, 8, 16, 32, 64, and just on and on. But here's the issue. None of these things are dividable by 3. So getting the perfect probability, no matter how many times we roll or flip our coin or use this random 7 function, it's never going to be a perfect probability of 10. All right, so we need to forget that. That's not going to ever work. How about this though? Let's say that we created a matrix. And in that matrix, we'll have one row that's going to indicate to us the first, let's say, roll. And second row will be just everything like between here, uh, the second roll, and so on and so forth. Like what we can do is attach a number between 1 through 10 for each one of these columns and matrices. So we'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the next one will say 8. 9, 10, and then we'll start over, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we'll go through that whole matrix. But that, uh, initially you might think, well, that's not going to equal, this is going to be 49 cells, and we need a perfect probability of, of you know, 1 through 10, right? So how is that going to work? Well, it, it can't. It can never work. Um, so what we'll just have to do is, if we reach above a certain threshold, if we reach above let's say 40, we'll just have to re-roll and do it again. And just keep doing it until eventually, you know, realistically, we will hit something that's going to be in between here. And that will be random. That will be in the range of 1 to 40, and that's going to be uniform between 1 through 10. So let's start to code this out. It'll start to make sense as I code it. So first, I'm going to create this matrix. I'm going to do it in a, an initialize definition, and we'll just call it table. And this will be a list, uh, first we'll say none for blank in range of seven, and we'll make that nested like this. All right, so now we have our table, and what we'll do is say for mm, row in range of seven, and for column in range of seven, we are going to make this self.table row 7 equal to a number that we're going to be incrementing. 
And the thing is, we'll have to use a modular uh, to take kind of take care of what we're doing. And so we'll say modular 10. And we'll start with n equaling 0. And this, so I'll be 0 through 9. And we can just add 1 afterwards. Um, that's not a problem. And we'll just increment n like this. So let's print out our matrix and see what that looks like. I'm going to have to pass here so that doesn't error. <clears throat> and let's just make sure this looks like it's supposed to. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at this. And let me just show you. This is our matrix, right? And we see it's 7 by 7. And all these are going to be between 0 to 10. Well, 0 through 9, which is, we'll just make that 1 through 10. The only one that's going to be a concern is from this row column to this row. Because this is not uniform, right? So what we'll do is we'll roll twice, and if we hit, uh, well, if row, first if row equals 6, then we will just try again, we'll continue. Uh, or if row equals 5 and column equal, is greater or equal to, what, 4? Is there 4? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Nope, uh, greater or equal to 5. Yeah, so 5, 6. Then we'll start try it again so we'll use this kind of condition to see if we need to roll it twice all right so now we kind of know what we need to do what we're going to do is say well we'll do an infinite loop while true uh, let's roll for our row we'll say uh, ran seven Oops. and for our column we'll ran seven and we'll actually need to subtract one here because it's zero indexed that's no problem though. And if row equals six or row equals five and column is greater or equal to five, then we have to do it again because that's not going to work. Otherwise, we just return from our self.table the row and column. And this actually does end up becoming uniform. Now let's make sure that I didn't make any typos. Of course I did. Rand is not defined. Oh, Rand seven. Okay, let's try that. And I'm so silly, I put in the number there. Okay, so please work. This looks like it's working. Let's submit that. And ah, uh, what did I do wrong? Oh, of course, you need to add one. Forget, there's going to be no tens right now. Okay, so. Okay, there we go. That's accepted. Now, I've realized this is a very roundabout way of how I ex it explained it, because you could uh, do some one-liners to simplify this. Um, but in order to understand why this works, I really think it's important to get this matrix in your head. Uh, once you do that, you could probably simplify this a lot more. Um, but the basic logic is going to stay the same. Like, you, you could have definitely avoid creating this matrix and save some memory, but um, this... It's probably the only way to actually get it to uh, randomize 10. So I uh, hope that helps. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.